Hey everyone, in this video, I am going to explain you about service registry and discovery. What is the need of, what is the problem in the current architecture that we have and how to solve that with the service registry and discovery. So let's go ahead and start with the problem statement and then we will solve that with the service registry and discovery. So the problem statement goes like this. So these are the individual services that we have. I am considering the online shopping portal, so product, fraud, payment, pricing, order services and others as well. And this is the client which is going to use all of these services to complete the application. What is the most obvious solution uh, that, what is the most, when I say about uh, client wants to contact to product and all these services, the most obvious answer is that direct communication. But we move to microservices architecture from monolithic architecture to get some benefit um, as per the functionality, as per the requirement, as per the load that we have. For example, it is possible that certain point of time product service is getting high load uh, independent of others. So it is getting more requests from the client other than others. So product service, I have to increase the instances of the product service so that it can serve more requests. So in runtime, for example, initially it was one instance. So when the load is uh, load is increasing, I have to increase the product service instance from one to two and then three. And when and when demand is decreasing, request is decreasing, I have to again come back to two and then come back to one instance. And the same same theory is applicable with other services as well. So we can have fraud service more than one payment service also more than one because this was the main funda behind uh, behind converting monolithic application into microservices architecture when we had one sing single microservice it had some host it had some port some location client was uh, aware about that and it was proper but when we added one more instance second instance i have to have some mechanism to inform the client about the second instance and so that client can call that one because there is no other way that client can request to the second send request to the second instance and this problem is applicable with all of the services so what do you think when we add all of these code in the client so client is uh, going to client service is going to fill up with this uh, with this infrastructure codes uh, to take which is not related to the business logic and other than that client also has responsibility about sending the request, getting the response, processing the response and uh, before serving to that user. This is the main problem that it is uh, uh, with the direct communication that we have. So what is the solution? Let's try to find out that. So this is the architecture that we have. So what if we add one more service here, one more extra service here, which we are calling here registry. So all these services that we have individual services, they get themselves registered with the registry service. So when whatever location that product service has, it is going to register with this one that here I am. And when it is increasing from one instance to two instance, second instance is also going to get registered with this registry service. And this is going to happen automatically. When we have second service, third service, I can inform that to registry service that I'm a, hey, I'm available here, get registered, I want to register with yourself. So registry service will, uh, is going to take care of that. So all the registry and discovery, all those codes I have uh, ported to the another service. Now, client, before contacting the individual services, client service is going to call the registry service like this one. When from the registry service, it is going to get the individual information that, like if I want to call the product service, it is going to fetch the product service response from here. When getting the product service response, it is applicable for all as well. Then after getting the exact address of this product service, it is going to call the individual services that we have. Now you understand the flow. First, we have all these services, they are going to get registered with the registry service. Now, client is also going to discover that service from the registry service, whichever it want to call, product service, fraud, payment, pricing or order service. Accordingly, it is going to send the request to individual service that it needs. Let me, uh, let me make it more fine grain with the single service here. It is the client here. It is the registry service here. First call that is first whatever what is the first function that is going to happen happen this is the customer service when it is coming live it is going to send request to registry service to get itself registered 
then whenever client needs second step is going to happen that it is going to look up for the customer service it is going to get the response and it is then going to call the specific function that it wants from this and it is going to get response that so very simple flow right so all the registry and discovery logic we have moved to the this one so that automatic registration or whenever we have more than one instances new instances coming up customer service they can automatically get registered itself and whenever that instance is going down registry service automatically can deregister that so that when client is going to look up that it is not getting the dead address which doesn't exist all these things are happening automatically from last video we also have understood about api gateway so when where this api gateway fits into with service registry and discovery let's see the next diagram for that so here we have client we have registry here we have gateway is also a kind of service here so it is here and here we have uh, all the services that we needed first function what uh, it is going to happen all the services that we have here going to get registered themselves with this one gateway is also going to get registered with this registry service so client whenever it is it wants to call something it is going to to the registry service it is going to fetch the uh, gateway address of the gateway and then it is going to call the gateway with with, uh, with the feature with the function whatever it wanted for example it is asking for the get customer from the gateway now it is the responsibility of the gateway to look for the gateway uh, get customer service from the registry service and then call the individual see the flow is changed now client is now looking for the registry service to look for the gateway and when the request has come to gateway gateway is going to look into the registry for customer microservice and after getting that address it is going to call the get customers individual service right so see the individual responsibility have been segregated into a separate microservice registry and discovery all these things happening here registry service the functions that we have understood in the gateway pattern all these are implemented here client is sitting here and individual microservices are here and everyone's role is defined and they are uh, they are configured properly and they are communicating properly now and uh, whatever functions they have uh, configured for and whatever function they have been written for so that's how service registry and discovery api gateway functions together now last point coming to the implementation of the service registry and discovery if you are creating a uh, microservices with spring boot so uh, service registry and discovery is provided by the netflix library that we have eureka eureka gives the functionality to registry and discovery i already have implemented this with real time example let me show you that playlist this is the playlist for the this is the playlist for the service registry and discovery that we have earlier i also have covered proper theory about this so you can um, now you understand the theory part uh, properly here so you can skip the first and second video and directly jump to the demo part here you will get proper understanding with real time example how you can start registering and discovering the microservices so this is the demo that you should look for what is next that we are going to look into so here in this diagram i have not explained about load balancer load balancer also plays very much important role because when uh, the, let me brief you that we have different services s1 s2 s3 and this has multiple instances this also has multiple instances so how to distribute the load among different instances of the same service that is handled by the load balancer uh, there is the concept of load balancer there are different algorithm for the load balancer all those things i am going to explain in the next video want to see all other topics under microservices architecture this is the link that you should check out that's all about this video i am going to repeat the last line of the video which is most obvious uh, if you found the content useful please don't forget to like share subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that we get notification about every upload on the channel i'll see you in the next video till then take care stay safe bye bye